Hey everybody, welcome to my tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make mobile apps for iOS using the Ionic framework. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have Xcode installed on our Mac. So in order to do that, let's head over to the App Store. So you can just click on this blue icon right here. And we want to head over into this search bar right here and search for Xcode. Now that uh, the results have loaded up, we're looking for this app right here, Xcode. So click on that. And you want to make sure that you um, click over here, get, and then install the app. And then this will install Xcode on your system. All right. Um, so I'm gonna. It, it's quite a hefty download, as you can see here. It's um, 5.3 gigabytes. So it's gonna take a bit of a while. So let's see you a bit later. Okay. So now that we have Xcode installed, the next step we want to take is we want to install Homebrew. So now Homebrew is a little utility that can allow us to install some of the other stuff that we need to get Ionic running. So let's head over to our browser and we're over here at this page, brew.sh. And it's gonna have this instruction right here on how to install brew. So what we wanna do is we wanna copy over this command, click copy. And what we want to paste this command in our terminal. Now, in order to open your terminal, you want to hold command and then press uh, spacebar. And then that's gonna open up Spotlight. And then in Spotlight, we wanna type in terminal and it's gonna autocomplete, press enter. And it opens our terminal window here. So next, what we want to do is we want to paste the command that we copied over and press enter. So this command is going to go ahead and install Homebrew. And we're just going to wait for a little bit while it downloads the files. Right, so it's asking us to confirm if we want to do all of that. We're going to press enter to say yes. And we're going to enter our password to confirm. Right, so most of the tools, I think they are almost done. It's asking for the password again. Let's press enter. Now it's downloading and installing Homebrew. Yep, I had to install the command line tools first. And now we're moving. Right, so finally, uh, Homebrew has installed. We can see here it says the installation is successful. Um, let me just clear the screen and I'm just going to type in brew. And if you see this and it doesn't say that command can't be found, that means we have Homebrew successfully installed. So that's great. Okay, now the next step is we now want to use Homebrew in order to install a program called Node.js. Now, Node.js. Um, gives us a number of tools that we will then use to install Ionic. So let's type in brew in our terminal here. Brew install node. Then press enter. Starts off by trying to update um, Homebrew, but it's already up to date. And now it's downloading um, the dependencies for Node.js. Right, so finally, uh, Homebrew has installed. We can see here it says the installation is successful. Um, let me just clear the screen. And I'm just going to type in brew. And if you see this and it doesn't say that command can't be found, that means we have Homebrew successfully installed. So that's great. Okay, now the next step is we now want to use Homebrew 
in order to install a program called Node.js. Now Node.js um, gives us a number of tools that we will then use to install Ionic. So let's type in brew in our terminal here. Brew install node. Then press enter. Starts off by trying to update um, homebrew, but it's already up to date. And now it's downloading um, the dependencies for Node.js. All right, so it looks like, um, let's see, there's an error here. Do not uh, fill my other sim length. All right, so some sim link wasn't done, um, but I believe everything should be done. Let's check. So we type in node-v. Uh, let's type in npm-v, and that means our installation hasn't been successful. So let's try again. So we want to type in the command brew link node and then press enter. And then that has um, linked um, node.js. So now if we type node-v, that should return the version of node. If we type npm-v, that returns the version of npm. Now this is excellent. Right, okay, so next we want to install Ionic and Cordova. So in order to do that, we'll type in npm install Ionic. Uh, actually, we want to do npm install dash g Ionic and Cordova. So what dash g does is um, it will install Ionic and Cordova in our whole system. Um, if we did not include um, that dash g option, it would only install Ionic and Cordova in the current folder. So we're going to use dash G and wait for all those files to download. All right, awesome. Now we have um, Ionic and Cordova installed on in our system. Seems like everything went well. Um, just to do a quick check, we can type in Ionic info. Uh, let me clear the screen. There we go. And if Ionic is successfully installed, it will produce a message like this. So gathering info, it'll show us our node version. We have 10.10, npm 6.41, and Ionic 4.1.2. Uh, we could also check the version of Cordova by also running Cordova-V. And that's going to return the version of Cordova, which is 8.0.0. That is excellent. So now what we want to do is we want to create our first um, Ionic project. So in order to do that, um, I am going to type in CD and this squiggly line. You can find that at the top left corner of your keyboard. That's just going to take you to your home folder. So I'm going to press enter and now I'm in my home folder. If I type in ls, that's going to list the files and directories that are currently in my folder. If I do that, you'll see those are the different folders that are there. So I want to do cd and type in desktop. So this is going to take me to my desktop. I'm going to press control l to clear the screen. And in my desktop, I'm going to do, I'm going to type in ionic start. Now, Ionic Start starts a new Ionic project. So when I press Enter, we are going to get this friendly greeting. And then it's going to ask over here for me to supply a name for our project. So we're going to call this um, first app, like that. Then press Enter. And next, it's going to ask us to pick a template. Now, what Ionic does is it provides you with um, several starter templates so you can use uh, so here we are you can use the up and down arrow key and the blue uh, indicates which template has been selected so we have the tabs template we have the blank template we have the side menu template we have super tutorial and AWS 
Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to use Super, which is a starting project complete with pre-built pages, providers, and best practices for Ionic development. And it also has like several pages, with a, which I think is going to be nice to look at. Whereas the other ones like Blank and Side Menu, uh, they tend to be more bland with not much. So let's press Enter to select Super, and it's going to download the necessary files um, to integrate with our project. Next, it's going to ask, do you want to integrate your new app with Cordova to target native iOS and Android? We are going to type in Y for yes. And while that downloads, a bit of background. So what Cordova does is it allows us to have our uh, um, Ionic uh, app, which is basically HTML and CSS and JavaScript, and it allows it to run on an iOS or Android device, which is basically what we want to do. We want our app to run um, on Android and uh, iOS. The reason why you are asked this is because it's actually possible to do, uh, make web apps with Ionic. So they won't actually run on iOS or Android, but would run on the web instead. Uh, but of course, we want ours to be a mobile app, so that's why we selected that. So um, we're going to give a bit of time for the rest of the files to download. And finally, we're going to be asked to install the Ionic Pro SDK. We're going to select N for no for now. And that's great. Our Ionic project has been created. So let's press Control L to clear the screen. Let's uh, type in LS and we will see in the listing here is our first app. So now let's type in CD first app. So this is going to take us in that directory. Again, Control L to clear the screen and let's type in LS. So now those are the files that make up um, our Ionic project. So I want to open this in um, my code editor. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, which I have over here. Um, but a quick shortcut if you have Visual Studio Code, you can just type in code and then a dot like that. And then that's going to open our project in Visual Studio Code. But um, you can use whichever code editor you want to open the the folder actually let's go to the desktop let's minimize all this so we can see our first app is over here so we can actually uh, open it up with any program that we'd like let's see what's available there uh, right let's just open it in finder and we can have it open in finder you can use whichever program you want um, I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code so let's use that and in VS Code, I'm going to go to File, um, and then I'm going to open, go to Desktop, and I'm going to open First App, and then click Open. And then let me maximize this. Excellent. So if this is our Ionic uh, project folder, in source is where we're going to be making most of our edits. Um, you can see here are all the different pages in the app. But actually, there's no need to worry much about this right now. What we want to do, let's take that back. What we want to do is we want to go back to our terminal. And in our terminal, let's delete that. We want to type in Ionic Serve and then press Enter. Now what this is going to do is it's going to launch our application in our web browser. So it opens up Chrome right there and you see here's the application starting. But you see it's um, covering the entire screen of the browser. Um, we want to right click and go here to inspect and then click that. And uh, let me adjust this a little bit, sorry. And you want to click on this little, sorry, let's drag this all the way here. We want to click on this little icon here. It says toggle device toolbar. And let me maximize Chrome. And what this does is it allows us to select different device sizes. So let's see what this would look like um, on the iPhone 678. 
here and so yeah it gives us this nice device size where we can play around with the app so you see the super template comes with this um, introduction right over here sorry so someone can click um, supposed to be swiping but it's not swiping and you can click continue you can go here to the sign up login so you see we have our app working in the browser but uh, not only do we want to be testing our app in the browser we also want to be testing it on the emulator so to do that we want to restore this screen um, actually let's minimize this um, so back here, we want to press Control C. That's going to cancel the running process. Uh, Control L to clear the screen. Right. So then, the last thing that we want to do is we want to um, run our app on the iOS simulator or on a device if you have a connected device. Um, I don't have a device connected. In fact, I want to use the simulator so that you can see my results on the screen. So essentially, what we need to type in is um, Ionic Cordova run iOS and then I'm going to do dash dash target equals and in quotes I'm going to specify the type of phone that I want the emulator to emulate. So here I want to emulate the iPhone 6s and I'm going to press enter. So then it's going to compile the application and then load it into the iOS simulator. Um, so when you do Cordova run, um, it's going to first of all look for a connected device and it will run the app on the connected device. If there isn't a connected device, then like it's doing now, it's going to launch the emulator. Let's minimize that so that we need to get a nice iPhone background. And you see here's our application, the starter application. You can even scroll, uh, swipe around. This is the explainer for the app. You can see this welcome page. You can go in to sign up and, uh, you know, basically uh, type in whatever information you want to type in and it will work as expected. All right, and there we go. You can see this application working pretty nicely on iOS. So that's how you get started with Ionic on uh, the Mac platform for creating iOS apps. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like, uh, comment in the comment section, and click on the red subscribe button if you're on YouTube. If you're watching this on Facebook, like my page and follow the content. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.